Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Learning Go video. In today's episode, we're going to be learning concurrency patterns and specifically two of them, fan in and fan out. So if you haven't seen the previous video where I covered the introduction to concurrency in Go, please check it out. I will be leaving the link in the description. It covers Go routines and channels and a few of the things that we're going to be using for these two patterns. So let's jump into what is fan in. So the fan in pattern consists of consolidating multiple channels into one channel by multiplexing each receive value. So how does it work? So let's say that we have our method for merging those channels. It receives messages from those set channels and then the output will be, like I said, merging all those channels. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that because we're using Go, everything that we're going to be using will be the primitives or the of the language. Uh, in this case, we'll be using channels and outputting a channel that we're going to be reading. So how does this work in real life? Let's jump into the code. As usual, the link to the code will be in the description, so feel free to check it out, clone it, and play with it. So we have this main.go that basically is going to be doing a few things. It's going to be reading two files, it's going to be sending those two files, like I said, it's going to be merging those using the fan in uh, pattern. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. They are sort of look the same, it's just the way we're going to be identifying how to stop the processing of those messages or, or, or rather those channels. So we have this file called file1.csv which con contains usually regular CSV files or rather CSV values and there is another one that basically does sort of the same. Th those are random words that I got from gen the random generator online, a CSV generator. What happens next is that I define a channel sort of like a doing um, sort of like a um, uh, graceful shutdown that I also cover in another video. I will be li leaving the link in the description as well. And then I'm merging those values and returning a channel that then I can use for just literally pin printing out the values. And then if you notice right here, I'm using the channel that I define above to clearly wait and do the graceful shutdown. Now, let's look at the reading of the files. It's a CSV file. It's just using the standard library. As you notice, I'm not using anything outside of the standard library. I'm using sync, OS, IO, FM, F, FUMP, encoding CSV, encoding CSV for reading the file, you know, FUMP for, you know, printing out some values, uh, sync for doing uh, a few examples I'm going to show you for synchronizing the channels and then obviously the CSV and, and a few others for reading the file itself. Nothing spectacular. I open the file, I read the file, it's a CSV, and I send the files through a channel that I return right here. So I have the channel right here. I instantiated that channel right here in this line and I'm returning it with the idea is that each one of the files will be using a go routine and they can be processed be processed in uh, concurrently so again i covered all of that in the previous episode so please feel free to check that out if we go back to how this is implemented for specifically the merge i have an example right here so i have function merge one that happens to be using the sync package and the sync package in, uh, defines a few different types for uh, that are not primitives of the language but allow you to do different things related to coordination with different either go routines or channel or not or channel or or share resources rather uh, for example mutexes uh, weight groups and there is a function called ones i will be covering those in a future video however for these specific examples, I'm using the weight group, and the way the weight group is that you define a sort of like um, how many times this should happen. And if you notice, the receiver right here in the merge one function is receiving a variadic value, which is sort of like a slice of chan of uh, strings. So we, we, the thing I'm doing is I'm, every time I'm receiving that channel, or rather. Um, not every time, but rather, I'm, uh, because I know the length of those uh, receive parameters, I'm going to create in a. I'm using the weight pro, the weight groups to identify how many times I should be receiving that that value back. Sort of like a like, if you put it that way, it will be sort of like a ticket that you are you know checking off every single time. Like how many times I should be checking off this thing when when um, um, I'm using it. So again. Important bits right here is that I'm outputting a channel 
which is the whole point of merging this uh, using this uh, pattern, defining uh, pattern. So I'm merging a bunch of different channels into one. And what is going to happen is that it's going to be receiving those values and are going to be sending to the uh, to the out channel that I have right here. Again, is this is the return value, and then when everything is completed, is going to be just closing the value. All right. So how does it work in in if I run this? Well, if I run main, you will notice that it's just going to be reading the values. If I run it again, sort of they're sort of the same, but it will change depending on how these values are. Look, notice right here is reading west first and then not make uh, first, and so this is sort of like depending on 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 the speed of the go routine and depending on your system so it's not the same all the time and it's one of, one of the important things about this pattern that is not going to be the same now if i go ahead and use the other method that i have in this case will be merge two so if i jump into merge two you will notice that i'm using the same code except except and i'm not using the sync package i'm using a channel and this is a big difference between what we were using before. And let me open up this in a different pane so you can see. So you have merge one. Uh, let me move it up so you can see merge one and merge two. So merge two is using a buffer channel that happens to be using empty strokes for identifying when to stop the go routine that is processing all the other channels which is sort of similar but not using the sync package now I'm, I'm mentioning this one in particular because there are other patterns that are used for sort of like background jobs uh, that i will cover in the future videos but this is important to notice so you have the wait channel buffer channel that is used right here when the send message or the send, send uh, function or send go routine finishes processing all the events it sort of says, hey, I'm done processing this thing. Let's move on. The key thing for this one is that this, this new go routine right here that sort of uh, identifies how many of those message, messages were received in the buffer channel. It's sort of equivalent if you think about it, but it's, it's not using the sync package. So if we run this again, it's going to be sort of similar. It doesn't really change. Let me save it so you can see I'm not cheating. So if I run this again, it's sort of basically, you know, doing the usual reading the values from the CSV as well as processing those and returning those back into the channel that we're supposed to be merging all those values in. So let's continue with the fan out uh, a pattern and I will see you in a few seconds. So what is the fan out pattern? The fan out pattern is basically doing the opposite of the fan in pattern. It takes a go routine or rather a channel and then it breaks up the values into different channels and go routines. Now, one important thing to notice about this specific fan out pattern, at least in the implementation that I have right here is that the values are not ordered. The values obviously are dependent on how the channel, or rather sending the values is ordered but the way they are processed depends on the routines that are receiving those values through the channels that are using. And this is not a publish, publish, subscribe kind of thing. It's a different way to put it. It's sort of like a, a sort of like workers, like you have a bunch of jobs to do and then you're sending those values into different workers. And really for this use case, you don't care how those values are processed. So if we look at how this works in real life, you will notice that it's sort of the opposite. You have a, uh, you have a channel and those are just literally sending out like it's, spreading out the values across all over all over all all, all all the channels that you you receive in the configuration that you have so let's look at the example and then we can see how this works in real life so i have the example right here and it's basically sort of the same except i'm not using the fan in pattern for doing this um, demonstration i'm just literally reading this file one csv that is the combination of the two previous files that we use again it's only 12 lines but it basically used to show you an example and show you how this works the way it's implemented i want to show you is i have three functions and all of them call breakup or you can call them i don't know fan out or something similar but the way they work is that they have a go routine and also they return a channel to indicate they are finished and i'm going to show you the final pattern and also an interesting thing when using select and also when you dealing with different channels and then assigning the those to nil so first of all 
we're calling those three break up functions that happen to be using behind the scenes a go routine and we know for sure that those are going to be handling the data that we're really going to be receiving so right here they are printing out the value nothing crazy and where they they are finished with or rather when the channel is closed they will stop this for loop will, will stop and therefore the channel that i return in this function will stop as well and this is important because when we're using select again like a cover in the previous video select those sort of like a, depending on the cases that you have it tries to see if the value is applicable to the channel that is being selected in this in that case so if i see right here if i see that the value is not available or rather the value for uh, the channel not the value the channel was already closed, which indicates by this OK variable, I can assign it that to nil. And this is important because I can do the same for the other three. And this is the way that I can indicate, hey, because all of them already closed, I can exit this for loop that I have right here and literally complete the fan out pattern. So if I run this, I will show you that it is basically doing that. And I can run it again and it will give you different values because that's how go routines work. They are not, not they are non-deterministic. And I can do it again and so forth. So this is really interesting because not only we're implementing the the uh, fun out pattern, but also we have a way to to sort of like stop handling uh, channels after we assign them to nil. Let me say that again. So if I go ahead and say br1, I assign it to nil. That means that this case, oops, this case, oh, what the heck, this case is not going to be uh, executed anymore because BR1 is already nil. And this is an amazing way to, to sort of skip channels when they are not available for whatever reason. In our case, we're saying because they are closed, because they are completed, we don't have to do anything with them. So we can move on and therefore we can exit the go routine or write the process that we have. So let's jump into the conclusions and I will talk to you in a, in a few seconds, okay? And that's it for this episode covering fun in, fun out, two concurrency patterns that could be applicable to things in real life. Like, for example, you are trying to merge two files into one. Maybe you are receiving data from two different data sources and you are trying to combine those or maybe uh, ingest those into data store. Or maybe you are trying to sort of uh, distribute data or values across different workers. Uh, those could be a good real life examples of, of these two patterns, fun in, fun out. And as usual, please, if you have any questions or any comments, just, just you know, leave them in the comment section below. And I will talk to you next time, okay? Take care and have a great day. See you.